Hello, welcome to Avi Moves. My name is Ivona and today we're talking about hip mobility. So the hip mobility is not a new topic, which is great because I do think it adds fantastic value to our everyday life as humans to move around and go around. But what I think is missing from the conversation is the what is hip mobility, the why it's relevant to me and the how to do it in a way that it actually enhances my body that I actually benefit from it and it's not just something that it's blindly followed that may lead to more damage than benefit. So let's dive in in these questions. First, what the heck is hip mobility? We all know where our hips are and just very briefly to go over the anatomy of them. This is your pelvic area. There's this big ball looking like bone and on the back side it is attached to our lumbar spine to our coccyx to our lower back and here are two sockets in which the legs are inserted in it, the the bones of the legs into the hip joints so oftentimes in hip mobility exercises we do focus on these two parts what means hip mobility in the hip joints where the leg meets the pelvic area it means this whole range of motion that on theory the joint is able to perform but on practice due to various reasons sometimes anatomy but other times just getting out of the habit of using them in a, their full range of motion we're not really able to perform. So the joint in itself is not the problem. Usually what starts hurting with time are all the liquids and membranes and ligaments and tendons surrounding that joint that being worn off, where, that are being used more than their other partners, like for example, the muscles attached to these tendons. So in the end, what is hip mobility? It is basically being able to use the full capacity of the joint pain-free in your everyday life. All right, that was the what. Now, why do we need hip mobility? Well, imagine that you're running somewhere and suddenly you're cramping, ow, crap. Or being able to sit comfortably in your everyday life where this opening and closing of the hip is really just a matter of comfort in your everyday life when you go for your picnic or for your meditation class, or when you want to sneak into your neighbor's house because their dog looks super cute and you have to jump over that fence. All of these daily activities really require you to be mobile in your hip joints. So I hope you're convinced now, and if you are, let's get started with the what. All right, so there are six general directions in which your hip joint, joint can go, and they go in pairs because where there is left, there is right, and vice versa. So first, we're going to go by our pairs. We have the flexion and the extension of that hip joint. And there is one exercise that covers them both. Can you think what is it? No need to sweat it. It's the low lunge. So you see how that front leg, the knee goes above the level of the hip joint here and it kind of imitates or prepares us for that low squat that is said to be really a basic pose for our ancestors. This is how you would cook, this is how you would prepare fire, they didn't have the chairs, they didn't have the sofa. So that was a very basic pose that we have lost and our body is fully capable to get into it at some point. <laughs> because this is already super tough, I get that. We use the low lunge to press the knee closer to our chest. Now this also involves the ankle mobility by sending the hip a little bit further away from the ankle. And here you can also start adding weights, repetitions. If this hurts too much, start simple. Pressing that knee towards the shoulder, range of motion to the sides, just to get the sticky parts to be less sticky. So here, we're flexing the hip closer to our body. Here, we're extending it away from us. And this is something that we do a lot in yoga. And I think it's very important in our everyday life because we spend most of the times with our knee a little bit closer to our body when we run, when we sit. So by sending that knee backwards 
we start stretching that part of the leg. And don't get me wrong, mobility is not all about stretching. It's also about strengthening the joints. So from here, you're gonna be able to lift and lower, targeting here, like sure, the glute is gonna work, but try to imagine how you're demanding from the flexors here, from all the tissue here, to do that movement. If this is easy for you, try to flatten the toes, and go up and down, and I'm burning already. <laughs> So this is flexion and extension. Don't forget to be dynamic, engaged in all of the position. Try to get into that squat, even if you're here, just like try to send one knee closer to the chest at a time. Try playing with how you wanna use this joint. Maybe you wanna stretch it a little bit more. Maybe you wanna strengthen it a little bit more. Second, we have the in and out movement of the joint on a horizontal axis which is called the adduction and abduction which are the fancy names for the same thing so basically adduction it's our very basic position where they are close to each other and then abduction imagine when you're kidnapping somebody taking them away you're also taking away the foot to the side higher higher <laughs> so this the opening is a bit more complicated and here you would have plenty of other exercises that can do that. You can start on tabletop position and just 500, try not to swing the whole body, just control it. Maybe you can extend the leg, Oof, it's burning, hop. This is the unilateral work where you work one of the joints and it's equally valuable as the bilateral work where you try to send both knees away from the midline, you are the midline, such as frog pose, which is tough. And obviously the middle splits. And so it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be too complicated. You really shouldn't feel too much pain and discomfort to that. But just by trying to send your legs away from one another, opening towards the horizontal axis, is really gonna make the difference. And you can also just be here, open them, wide and then just start to squeeze squeeze the buttocks and release and you're already going to start feeling how the hip joint is working now the third is my favorite because i think it's also the hardest and most underestimated mobility and we're talking about external and internal rotation the way this is different from the adduction and abduction is this when you, ha when you have abduction your leg just goes to the side right but when you have internal rotation, your foot goes up and your knee starts facing down or the other way around. The knee starts facing to the outside and the foot rotates towards the inside. So this is internal rotation. Bones rotate toward the inside and external, they're trying to look on the outside. The most common exercise is the 90-90, probably familiar with it where the back leg is internal rotation. As you can see, the bones are rotating inwards and the front is external rotation. So you get two in one. So this is the most familiar beginning with the internal external rotation where you're starting to send energy, fresh blood, nerve signals to the hip joints. Like, hey guys, we can still move in that direction. But if this is getting too easy for you, you can start bringing some strength in here with the arms on the ground or not by lifting the back leg and releasing lifting the foot rather and releasing maybe you even lift the whole leg maybe you even extend it these are all more or less advanced variations of the same thing but nevertheless they really tell the body hey buddy we can go there and now when you find your hip mobility exercises or if you ever get curious in exploring new routines always keep in mind these six directions these three pairs of movements that your hip mobility program needs to include for it to be truly effective and your your hip joint to benefit in all the directions that it's made to move let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a program like that with exercises thank you for joining me and i'll see you next time